Thank you so much. Uh, thank you everyone for joining uh, me today. Um, last year I did a talk and I was told uh, I packed five sessions into one. So this year I prepared just half of a session. So I have to speak very slow to, to get those 20 minutes over. <laughs> Okay, so uh, what I would like to show you today is um, custom annotations. Uh, you probably used, all of you used annotations so far, but uh, who of you, uh, whom of you uh, have tried your own annotation? Wolfgang for sure, but uh, some of you as well, so you can leave already <laughs> and check out a different session. Yes, um, why would you uh, use annotations? Um, I've seen uh, custom annotations in different customer projects. Um, one I want to show you today, uh, or parts of them I want to show you today, is um, a customer project where we are using CAP, uh, not on the BTP, but uh, on-premise. And uh, we are using it in two different network zones, um, the internal customer network and the external um, client-facing network. And we are not allowed to um, talk to each other via REST or anything else, but we are allowed to use the same database. Um, to add more security, um, we are trying to uh, use database grants to allow read access, write access only to the tables and views which are necessary, and uh, therefore we need to generate grant statements uh, for the database. And as you might know, um, CDS, lots of tables, lots of views, uh, writing those grant statements uh, is really an issue um, if you do it manually. And that's why we introduced uh, annotations where you can annotate your um, views and your services um, with custom, um, with a custom annotation and say, this uh, database uh, should be readable by the database user for our internal network, and uh, this view should be um, uh, should be allowed to be readable um, by our other user. Um, but there are many other options. I know customers uh, like Wolfgang who um, built a whole layer in between uh, the database layer um, to do multi-tenant stuff and so on. And uh, this is really a mighty future. You could, um, a feature you could also um, build custom um, custom validators uh, and many more things. But uh, yeah, let's just uh, jump into the code. And uh, I want to show you three different options how you could uh, use custom custom annotations. And um, the first one is uh, the one I described to um, to really uh, generate grant statements. So I feel like really, really small Node.js app and uh, it requires CDS and um, it loads all models and it loads the namespace. And I will just quickly uh, go to the debug terminal and uh, run it. So what do we see here? Is it big enough? Should I uh, enlarge it? Perfect. Okay. So let's go into CSN, and there you see definitions. And um, it's so large that you cannot really see anything, but um, yes, that's a good idea, and also the breakpoints. Um, there you can see all the definitions which you have available. Um, if you jump into the database, you can see I used uh, parts of the bookshop uh, sample of uh, the CAP team. Um, we have two database entities, uh, entities, books and authors. And we have exactly one service uh, which projects books and authors. And um, if you go back to the debugger, then we see um, here is our admin service. Um, that's the service uh, you've just seen with two entities, the books and the, um, the authors. And also somewhere below here, we have the two database tables. Um, so, until now, you can see we have um, our elements here. So these are all our database fields, um, but we don't see any annotation. Um, so let's jump into the schema. And um, oh, I don't want this. Um, and add a custom annotation here. Um, let's add a recap 2023 20, annotation here and maybe uh, create an array. Um, um, of just one uh, single string. And if we run the, um, the debugger once again and jump into the CSN, 
definitions and the definitions of did I do author? Oh, yes, author. Then you can see here's your annotation. And what you can also see if you go into the service author that you can find your annotation, uh, annotation here as well because it is a projection. Um, what we can do then is to, um, to filter our uh, entities because uh, in my example, I want to have all database tables so I can uh, create grant statements like grant read to table, the name of the table and then uh, the user. Um, this is probably there's a better way to do it, but I did not find a better way. So what I'm doing is I'm filtering all, um, all definitions for entities um, and I say if it starts with my namespace, then it probably is a table. Um, if it is of type entity, it does not start with my namespace and it does not start with SAP, then it's probably a service, um, a service entity, um, a projection, something like that. So something which will end as a view in the database. And um, if it's this type service, then it is really easy, then it is a service. And um, after I filtered all of that, uh, I'm then free to uh, do some custom stuff with that. In my case, um, I'm just calling uh, generate uh, SQL uh, function, which uh, generates my database grant. So I will just quickly copy everything in here to the grant generator. It's really an easy function. Um, just creates a string template. And um, let's go over. And here you can see um, those are my grants for, um, for my tables. And if I now say I want, um, uh, let's say create and delete grant for recap quadrio books. Um, then I use my custom DB grant annotation, jump into my schema CDS, jump into my book, and I can here just say um, create and maybe delete. Um, and run it again, and then hopefully Yes, we have uh, create and delete here. Um, so this is one option how you could use it. Um, if you want to generate something which is um, kind of independent of the workflow uh, or the life cycle of your application. Um, the second thing I think I want to show you is how you could do something on load. Um, so if you have a server GS and um, import the CDS, you can uh, register an unloaded handler and um, I will just um, at a breakpoint here, do CDS watch. I uh, don't need to breakpoint because it is a debugger statement. Um, and then once again, you can see you have the model and you have the definitions. And this is something um, if you uh, joined the keynote this morning, um, you saw on one of the slides of, da uh, of Daniel that um, that he had the new CDS plugin architecture, and that's exactly what he did with um, the um, the audit logger, I think, or the change log. The change log. Uh, he added a new custom change log annotation, um, and this uh, there and this um, sample is not custom anymore because it's uh, provided by the Cup team. But um, he used this on uh, loaded hook to go through the model definitions. Um, he just looped over all the entities checking for an at change log attribute. And if it is there, then he uh, changes something in the model and it is available to you um, during the runtime. So it is really a um, um, mighty, uh, mighty tool which um, may help you to, to, provide, um, to provide new functions to your model. And then the third step um, where, uh, where you could use it is um, your, your services. So let's say um, you want a new validation. Um, let's say your book stock price is really, really special and uh, you add a new annotation, better check twice. Uh, let's remove that one here so it will not start every time. Um, then we can go into our service, JS. A little bit smaller. Uh, register a new handler, for example, and before handler, which uh, goes into every single, um, uh, which registers for every single event. 
and uh, when it's open, Once again, special sound effects here. Um, check our request, and within the request, we will find the target. There's our target, and uh, the target holds uh, the model of the current entity. And um, you can see our custom DB grant here. You can also see the elements, which are all of um, all of the fields uh, we have, and there also is the stock, and it's part. Of the stock, um, you find our new um, annotation. Better check twice, and you could now do something with this. Uh, maybe we do a request dot target dot um, elements. I think request dot target dot elements. Um, then uh, loop over it. Object um, entries, and um, then. For each element, and um, then we could check if um, element um, has our new entity, which is at better check uh, twice, and we could now have our um, custom validation logic here. And this will then um, automatically work everywhere where you use um, the better check twice um, annotation. Yes, so as I said, this time I only prepared half of the, <laughs> of the session. <laughs> so I'm um, already done, but I would be uh, interested in to hear how you are using custom annotations and maybe um, also here if you have some ideas now how you could use it um, in the future. Thank you. So your comments and questions, please ha raise hands. Maybe Wolfgang. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I am working as an external resource in a um, project as a large um, consulting company. We figured out the usage of uh, annotations almost two years ago, so the hard way. And um, we use it for creating um, various elements in our deployment process. So we added some database abstractions. We <coughs> creating content in the import layer in the meantime. So we think it's a very powerful uh, ability to add functionality in various um, parts of your or operations process or execution process. So we are very happy with that. So Max was also part of the project. That's why I'm very uh, excited to see you here and listen <laughs> about this. So and we found out that it's really possible to do this. So um, in addition to the already existing annotations, we are using annotations we have been creating on our own, also in the area of analytics which are very helpful for us to um, reduce the development time. So I personally think it's a really flexible and powerful matter to speed up your development and operations. I think. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, is, is um, used the data man with the error notation. Is it currently also supported with the new CDS typer for the TypeScript support at, at the moment? I don't know, to be honest. I don't use it. Um, I only use um, the add annotations and that works, but I guess uh, that uh, typer should also be um, working. Yeah, yeah because uh, I think also. Yeah. Okay, sorry. So, um, um, my assumption would be that TypeScript uh, would support this. I'm not sure. We didn't test it yet. For two reasons. At first, it's a specific syntax, which is usually not part of the uh, TypeScript syntax. So it could be ignored by the compiler, but in, uh, listed in CSN. And if the TypeScript environment is supporting CSM, you may be able to find it there as well. Not sure. We didn't test it yet, but the expectation is yes, it could happen that it works. <laughs> So we got one question from the online audience. Um, is, a, is about is there any support in Java also for that? Do you 
are you aware of something? Um, so there are annotations in Java, but as I'm just a Node.js developer, um, I don't know, to be honest, uh, I'm not using Java. Any Java developers here in the, the room? Who wants to show off? <laughs> no offenses. No. Good. But it is easy to test, so I think uh, 10 minutes and you will figure it out if it works or if it does not work. Any further comments, questions? <laughs>